Hello everyone. So today we're going to be learning about NMR. <laughs> NMR is another tool used by organic chemists now to figure out the connectivity or the neighboring environment of the molecule. Let's say in the case of hydrogen NMR, they figure out what kind of hydrogens are there and according to that we can find out the environment around them. So IR was in previous videos you can understand that is for functional groups mass spec is for the mass now hydrogen NMR is going to be the hydrogen environment around certain molecules okay and then using all the three techniques we can figure out the whole structure and the next video will combine just use just do problems 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 and combine all these three into one and how we can tackle problems by using three these three techniques. Okay, so let's continue with HNMR. The first thing we should understand is the shift, which is like shift of molecules where they're located, and it's called chemical shift. Chemical shift. So what is chemical shift? Chemical shift is the actual shift of the molecule the hydrogen depending on what kind of functional groups or what kind of molecules are around it let's say um, before we get there let's just talk about what it means let's say if you have starting from zero all the way let's say 10 you can go further on but when you start on the on the right it's called up field and on the left it's called down field Okay, so that's one terminology that you can use. So if it's downfield, we also call it deshielded, and when it's upfield, we also call it shielded. So if something, let's say a hydrogen is beside a very electronegative molecule, that's going to be very deshielded because the electron density is going to be pulling away from it, so it's going to be showing on the downstream or right here or near the higher ranges. So if it's electronegative, let's say a carbon right here which is beside a carbon which is attached to a chlorine this hydrogen is going to be deshielding deshielded more than a hydrogen like that let's say something like this why because the chlorine is going to be pulling electron density towards it making it very deshielded and causing a shift near down so downfield so there are a lot of numbers that you should know, but these numbers will be given to you on the test. But that's the concept of chemical shifts. We will do an example where I show you how we can apply these chemical shifts. Okay, so to get the, the, the idea, first idea is chemical shift where if it's more electronegative, you move to the left. If it's less electronegative, you move to the right. The zero point is your reference point, and there's a specific molecule called TMS and we put that in your solution so that gives a signal that so that's just starting point where you're where you this is where you start from a reference point you can call it and we can move on the more deshielded it is or the more electronegative it is it goes to the left less goes to the right okay so that's one important rule that you guys should understand we will do examples to clear that concept up the next one I want you to know is something called the n plus one rule this rule students tend to get like a little bit like caught up like oh how do I apply this how do I apply this and so let's, let's work on it what our n plus one rule tells you is that this is how many peaks on your NMR you'll see or how many splitting patterns you'll see um, so that for each molecule so let's say for something like this It's some R group, it doesn't matter. And let's, let's, let's call them, let's first find out equivalent hydrogens. What equivalent hydrogens are, that means they're the same hydrogens. These two hydrogens are equivalent hydrogens, so we call them, let's call them carbon A, car, hydrogen A, hydrogen A. Why are these similar hydrogens? Because their environment is exactly identical. 
So these guys will not be splitting each other. So they don't walk on the n plus one rule. So this rule can go up to three bonds to f max of four, but we could we look at three. So that means is any hydrogens three three bonds away from it can cause a splitting pattern. So something like one, two, three. So that's one. That's one hydrogen. That's three bonds away. So this, and then another one will be one, two, three. That's another one that's away. One, two, three. So there are three hydrogens that are three bonds away from this hydrogen. So the N for here equals three. So the pattern this will show would be N plus one, which is three plus one, which is four, a quartet or four, four. So for this hydrogen, it will be a quartet. Since these two are equivalent, this will also show a quartet, but you will understand, you will understand what, like this, you, they won't be uh, differentiated because they're exactly the same. So on the other hand, let's look at these hydrogens right here. Let's call them B hydrogens. These three are exactly identical. If they're identical, they won't split each other, but we have to look three bonds apart. So one, two, three. That's one, one, two, three. That's two. So it has two. So N number for these guys is two. So then two pl N plus one, two plus one, which is three. So this, these guys will show a triplet or a three pattern. So if you have to show this on the NMR, you will see one of them as a quartet and another one as a triplet. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. The quartet represents these two hydrogens and the triplet represents these four hydrogens. Sorry, these three hydrogens right here. I apologize. So these three hydrogens are represented by the triplet these two hydrogens are represented by the quartet. That's important fact to know because students usually like why this, why that? Because the rule is n plus one, where n defined by the number of adjacent hydrogens that are only three bonds or apart. Okay, so that's another rule. And don't worry if you're not getting this right now. We will do an example, so we'll it's going to come again. The next one is the integration. What, like, how can we tell what is what? Integration is just the number. So, integration. All right, integration just tells you the number of hydrogens there are. So, let's say in the case back here, where you have three hydrogens, is forming a triplet, so it'll be. Third, three third as large as this is two, so it'll be twice as large. This just tells you the number of hydrogens. Okay? And there is also something called coupling constant. Usually these are just yeah, these are some numbers that you have to just memorize. And what these what this is is just the distance between each peak. So let's say between this peak and that peak and this peak, between these peaks, that's the coupling constant. And for individual molecules, for different hydrogens, they change. Okay? So these are some, the most important ones to know are like your chemical shift and your N plus one rule. Integration can help you define the number of hydrogens and coupling constant, if you know the exact numbers and they give you the numbers, you can find out what kind of hydrogens are they are. But usually professors are in our first or second year level, these are the important ones that you have to un really understand. Your chemical shift, which tells you if it's deshielded, not shielded, beside an electronegative molecule or not. N plus one rule, which tells you the, how many hydrogens are across each hydrogen. Okay, and looking at these two, we can figure out practically everything. But sometimes integration does help you, where it can tell you the hydrogen, how many hydrogens there are, and also, Coupling constants can also help you to find the hydrogen, what kind of hydrogens there are. Okay, so we will do an example now.